my parents moved us here in 1980. I was four, about to turn five. This is the only place I've known. We moved up from South Florida, West Palm Beach. Uh, this is the only place I've always called home. Uh, I grew up here, played Little League here. Um, that's how I got my start. Went to University of Florida, came back to be a pharmacist locally here at um, Independent Pharmacy. And then we've raised our kids here now. Um, I've got one who, it's, it's a fun time, so I've got one, Tanner, who has started working with me at the pharmacy now. And, and that's a fun thing to see. So he's now moving back to the area. I've got a daughter. We're taking to clear water so that she can be a doctor. And um, then she, her plan is to move back. So I've got to raise my kids here. We still have a 12-year-old that we're raising here. And, and I look forward to being able to raise our grandkids here, hopefully. So that's the plan. But that's how we got started in Walton County and wouldn't have it any other way. It was a lot of fun back then. Um, I mean, Little League, you know, my life revolved sometimes about Little League and Pee Wee football and, and growing up. And it, what was made the community so great is you had people in the community that would come watch your games that weren't your relatives. Um, they, they supported you and, and as you moved up through the middle school and high school, uh, ball, they, they were still there. That was so much fun. I can remember at elementary school when we had some of those great football teams and we would um, we would travel to go watch them play in the state playoffs. So it was so much fun and, and the, you know the community really wrapped around itself and and that was that was what made Defuniac so great. Um, I was telling somebody the other day about the old Chautauqua Festival, how we used to have a greased pole and there was a $20 bill at the top of the greased pole and I haven't seen that in a while but I, I told people we loved, we lived for the Chautauqua Festival for a couple of things. We were going to try and climb the grease pole, and we were going to go get us some new rubber band guns. So it was, it's what makes the area great. And you know, it was a community. It's it's changing as most everywhere in Florida is changing. Um, we're growing. Um, sometimes you meet new people that you never saw before. Um, I go to church down in Freeport, and sometimes I look around and I go, I don't know anybody. <laughs> You know, it's so, uh, but you know, that's part of, of you know, living in such a great area is other folks want to live there too. And even though you see it change some, I remember, um, I'll go back to the yesteryears a little bit more. Um, we used to ride in the backs of pickup trucks, you used to ride your bike all over town. Um, now, you know, you get a little nervous if you let your kid out on a bicycle in town, and, and so you start to see some of that change, but but absolutely, it's not like a big city. Um, I mean, I go visit some of these big cities to see other legislators and talk about uh, legislation and that type of thing. And every time I tell my wife, I said, I am so glad we do not live in a big city. I would lose my mind. It's just great to see grass spaces sometimes. Uh, we, over, we overlooked that at times, the simplicity of different things. Yes, maybe we don't have some of the temporary luxuries or the different things like that, but in the long run, I'll take this all day long. Oh, it takes some involvement from the community for sure. I mean, it it takes them recognizing that I'm willing to go up there and work hard to represent every one of them. Um, and I think that, you know, politics was never on my plate, never on my mind. The Lord had to show me that one, and that was even after I, I tried to disobey for a while. <laughs> when I finally got to that position, I realized it's one more avenue where I can help people. And that's what I love. That's what makes me happy. That's what brings me joy is to be able to help somebody. And so this was one more opportunity to do that. You know, that whole sense of wanting to help other people originated in church. Um, you know, if I follow my Lord and Savior, and, and that was shaped by a whole lot of the community members. I can name off so many big, important women in my life. Um, Anna Kay Drake. Uh, my mom was a, another big one. Uh, Miss Alford. So there, I had so many big time Sunday school teachers that really instilled that in us. Um, I can remember some of my earlier pastors like Jerry Hood and, and the church shaped us, but that was the community also there. You know, it wasn't just inside the church. Um, out, we lived church outside of the church building. So it was, um, you know, that was, part of, that was what shaped me the most is a community that had faith and a community that cared about other people. Yeah, you know, it's amazing sometimes when we have new folks move in, and then at the pharmacy I'll hear them say, "This, this is so great. You, know, you guys know my name. You know who I am, and that's what you get in a small town. Um, is people that are concerned about you and, and want to help and look out for your best things. So that's the that's the what I would say the most. If you're coming from a big city, you're going to get to slow down and breathe 
and you're going to get to experience what is great around you. And some, sometimes we have folks that move here and they just didn't understand that uh, you can actually relax and enjoy what is around you. Um, and having folks in the community or other people that you may not have met before uh, that they're going to care about you and treat you the right way. It's so fun to listen to people try to explain Southern hospitality. Um, when you have folks move in that have never really experienced it, it's an eye-opener and um, there, there's nothing better than Southern hospitality.